I just wanted to start out with that moment after Everybody Loves Raymond ended and where your mindset was, and I guess specifically, how long did it last to be sort of rich and idle and, Three and like enjoying your success? Three months. Three I know, months. I know exactly. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, because when Raymond ended, so this is nine years now of, of Raymond, right? Right. But it's like I was in a bubble. It was like I was in a submarine because I was, you know, in the writer's room, in the edit room, I was on the stage. So now it just ends. And it's like you come out of this, this submarine and you're like, this is where I live? You know, you're like, my kids are 12? You know, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> right. it's, it's really a weird feeling. But there's also excitement because now you have all this, you have time, you got money now, you got a little bit of fame, whatever. This is gonna be cool, let's see what happens. You're imagining all the, all the ways your life's gonna be great. Yes, and my shrink at the time had the insight or the hindsight to say to me, instead of coming once a week, do you wanna come twice a week? And I'm like, no. I go, I, I have a hard <laughs> enough time thinking of things to say once a week to right. you. Long story short, three months later, I'm going twice a week. <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> it took about three months until the void just smacked me in the head and just this sense of purpose was, and, and what now? Where's my passion now? Where's my direction? I had this creative energy going nonstop for nine years. And now it was just this empty kind of uh, uh, identity crisis. And I just, whew, yeah, it was, it was a little rough. Did you worry that maybe that's all, oh, like, yeah. all you were built to do? Oh, hell yeah. No, I, I didn't worry that that's all I was built to do. I, I worried that that's all people are going to think or want to see me in. Right. That was the blessing with Martin Scorsese and Vinyl. He had never heard of me, not hadn't seen the show. Never heard of me. Is that possible? Yes, yes it is. It is because <laughs> we checked. One. We checked. My agent said, oh, so he's never seen the show. And, and, and his casting agent, she said, no, he's never, he's never heard of him. You know, it's Martin Scorsese. He's a film genius. And I'm not going to be so pompous to think, how the hell has he never heard of me? <laughs> um, but that's what got me the job, I think, is, is he saw my tape without any of that. But anyway, yes. What you're talking about is that when you are super successful at something, immediately that becomes your identity. And yeah. for someone who hasn't been in that situation, they, it's probably hard to understand how, how constricting that is. Well, the thing that was lucky about it was I was a writer also, and it wasn't that I had to wait around for someone else to offer me something. My goal wasn't, I got to do something that makes them forget about that, because I was proud of, the, I love the legacy, uh, uh, of my sitcom legacy. You sure. know? My goal was to do what I wanted to do, and what I wanted to do was, was stick my little dramatic toe in there. The one thing I will say is, this is one of the, I mean, uh, I, was, I was lucky to I'm, have stand-up. You know, I, I can't think of how hard it is for an actor who, when that goes away, you know, has no other outlet, you know? Yeah. I still had that, but I knew I wanted to explore uh, other acting things. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you want to see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm going to give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out.